Ah, welcome back. Here's part three of my Enterprise C build. I know it's been a while, but, um, yeah, I've been busy on it. I did a little more than I said I would do in the last video, and also a little less. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense, but you'll see what I mean. Anyway, let's get right into it. So, I decided to do the secondary hull and the nacelles. Yeah, that's why it took me a little bit longer. I'll explain why I did later on. Anyway, deflector dish what to do with it. Well, first things first, I had to sand the back to diffuse the light. A flat base coat could do the same effect, uh, or you can do like that Krylon frosting in the can garbage thing, uh, but I prefer to sand. Uh, unless, you know, I'm too worried that I might sand something I shouldn't sand, then I'll use the flat base. Anyway, those spokes in the middle, what to do about those? Well, I could either... Um, paint them, or put some styrene strips on them, or leave them alone. In the studio model, they left them alone. I want to see what it looked like if they were painted. Uh, I didn't like how it came out in the end. Here you can see uh, primed, well, painted and ready to go. Uh, I didn't like how it came out in the end. The paint sort of peeled here and there. It didn't stick well to the primer. The paints got, uh, the, sorry, the tape got uh, covered in paint too much. It, it didn't look that great. It's not not great at all. So uh, I'm probably going to cover them with some uh, styrene strips that I'm going to paint separately. Uh, yeah, so I primed the uh, Basar Collectors too, and I painted the ring around the edge because uh, I wanted to see how it looked. I know it's not supposed to be a dark ring. It's supposed to be, I think, the darker blue, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's not going to be this. right? I had to attach them to the nacelles to see how they'd fit, and I noticed there'd be like a little gap and I wanted to have a nice smooth transition between the nacelles and the Bassar Collectors, so I sort of sanded that off in the end. So we painted the right color, don't worry. So back onto the pylons, I sanded smooth that seam line, it's no longer visible. Uh, but that was all for naught, as you'll see in a bit. Anyway, here are all the parts for the secondary hull with the gloss white coat inside. I first attached the bottom half of the nacelles onto the pylons, and when I did that, I, well, I had to force them on pretty hard, and when I did that, I heard some cracks, and uh, yeah, well, I heard some snaps, I should say, and here are the cracks all over the pylons on all four parts, some worse than others, but yeah, that was a real pisser for me. I, I, I was pretty fucking pissed. Because, uh, yeah, that's annoying. Because if it breaks now, it'll break again if I'm not careful, if I don't fix it right. Um, yeah, the reason why it broke, I didn't use styrene glue for the whole joint. I used some um, super glue, some CA glue. And, well, it didn't hold very well. I should have used styrene glue all the way. Uh, yeah, so how does one fix this? Well, I guess you could say, luckily, this happened to me before on both my Reliant and my Enterprise D. Uh, that was because I was handling it too roughly, and I didn't glue it properly to begin with, just like in this case. Um, yeah, so I need something that is hard, that will flex when needed, and uh, that will bond nicely to uh, the putty and the plastic. It's hard to get directly to the plastic. Again, I can't use the styrene glue because I have all this putty in that gap. That gap was a pretty fierce gap. Um, so I used some epoxy um, glue, right? The five minute epoxy. Uh, the way I did this is I sort of uh, dug a little trench with my scribing tool where the uh, crack was to make it a little bit bigger and I mixed uh, a little batch of epoxy. I sort of pushed it in there with a toothpick. I smoothed it out as best I could, sanded it down. Make sure to sand the epoxy first before you put putty otherwise the, you're not going to sand it very evenly because the putty is very soft compared to the uh, epoxy. So sand the epoxy, put some putty, put some primer, see if you did it right and repeat till that seam is gone. And uh, I gave it a lot of twists and turns, I was bending it as, as, as much as uh, I was comfortable with bending it. Didn't crack again so I think it's solved. It hasn't cracked yet either so I think I'm still good. Anyway. Here you can see all the pieces I'm going to use for the nacelles. I sanded the grills to diffuse them. Here you can see the uh, lights I'm going to use in the nacelles. A couple of blues, a couple of reds, a green, and a couple of whites. Um, I'm not going to show every step of me soldering this thing because it's a little tedious to do and you've seen it in the Reliant. I'll just show you how, I, like, the progress of the installation of the lights. That's about it. Anyway. Here you can see the hot spots showing through the grill, so I have some diffusion to do. 
Uh, I was taking different pictures at different angles and uh, yeah some angles you don't see the hot spots at all and some you do because the lights are only on the bottom part of the nacelle. Uh, the way I finally diffuse this in the end is, uh, well, it was a lot of trial and error, and we'll get to that when we get there. Here you can see the top of the nacelle. Uh, I had to put my little flasher and uh, my uh, stationary nav light. I did that technique of uh, bending the fiber optic, and I soldered a very, very, very tiny SMD. Uh, here you can see I installed all the lights I need on the bottom part of the nacelle and the two for the uh, basard collectors on them, and it looks pretty nice. Uh, here you can see all the paints I'm going to use on the nacelles. Of course, this was before I thought, hey, you know, I'll paint them all anyway and uh, I'll attach them to the secondary hull later. No, no, I'm actually just going to go all the way to priming, so I didn't actually use those paints as of yet, but I will. So the nacelle grills. Look at this color I chose. It's an amber bronze color, and it's darkened with a bit of uh, clear smoke. Now you might be thinking, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you doing that? They're, they're, they're supposed to be blue. Yeah, they're supposed to be blue, but when they're off, they're sort of a bronze color. At least the studio model has it, right? The, the, the effects they use afterwards, they make it blue, but when the power is supposed to be off, it's supposed to look kind of bronze. At least that's what it looks like to me. So I did that. looks kind of cool. Uh, but I shouldn't have put that clear smoke in it. It ended up being a little too dark for my for my taste, so I sanded it off and I uh, kept it as the uh, bronze, amber, whatever color, the orangey color. Um, so I took a couple of test shots after that. Looks pretty cool to me. Uh, you'll notice um, hot spots are still there. Uh, I still have to uh, tackle that, uh, and we'll get to that now. So diffusion. That is a... Um, complicated subject, at least in, in the, the Star Trek model building world. Um, we have a problem with having our lights too bright sometimes. We have our hot spots, we have our deflector dishes sometimes looking at flashlights, or it, sometimes it's just the camera picking that up, right? In person, it's usually less bright. Um, so for this one, uh, a couple ideas I had was, well, I have some opaque-ish hot glue. Let me cover the lights with that. Maybe, you know, it'll distribute the light a bit better. It helped a little, but not much, right? Uh, another idea I had was uh, using wax paper over the lights or over the nacelle grills. Problem is, is that I needed, like five layers worth and I'm like well can't I use something thicker styrene would be way too thick so I took out some white printing paper just regular paper white paper I cut it into a rectangle folded it into a little triangle placed it on top of the lights to see how it work and here you can see the lights on uh, one side without the diffusion with just the hot glue and here you can see it with the uh, paper and the hot glue and well it seems to blend the lights in there pretty well even on camera so in person it's even better so uh, yeah I decided to go with that that was my solution other people have other ideas you know you can play around the resistance of the lights you can uh, play around with uh, what you do on the back of the grills you can play around with a whole bunch of different things um, that's what I came up with and well I like it I don't know if I'll do it again that way on all my other models. We'll see how it goes. Now I have a video of the uh, nacelles turning on and off just for you guys. Uh, but before we get to that, you might have been noticing on some of my other pictures this black shit all over the fucking place on the nacelles. That is the Tulip Slick stuff, that black acrylic paint that I have that is very, very thick. Um, I've been using it to make a wall between the blue and the uh, red lights on the nacelles. I don't want them bleeding into each other make a nice little purple sheen there. So I was building up the layers slowly but surely. Like every couple hours I put a, a couple more layers of the black stuff until it builds up into a nice thin wall. Uh, the wall is actually a little bit flexible so I shouldn't poke it but don't have to worry about anything poking it, right? Uh, so here's the video. They turn on and they turn off. Uh, one nacelle in the back there is the uh, one without the proper diffusion and the one in the front is with the diffusion. Uh, my camera is uh, figuring out what to do, <laughs> how to take the, uh, the light in. Uh, the way it's turning on will be the real way, but the way it's turning off will not be because my uh, power supply has a tendency to uh, discharge a capacitor uh, instead of turning off like right away. So uh, when I install a switch, it'll be like off off. It won't do that little transition, even though it looks pretty cool having that. 
Anyway, it's time to glue those nacelles. About fucking time. Uh, so I used my trusty clothespins to hold this thing shut. But it was a little annoying to do this because um, at least the geometry of these nacelles are a little odd and uh, my clips were sort of at their maximum uh, extension and they had a tendency to slip off a lot so I had to like be around to make sure this actually didn't, you know, uh, come loose on me and then my nacelles would have like these big nasty gaps. Um, anyway, here you can see that black tulip stuff made a nice wall, not transparent, it will block everything, so that's good. So before I put my nacelle caps on permanently, I need to fill in the little gaps on the side. Uh, this actually didn't take me that long to do, although the, um, uh, the uh, I guess, the gold ring thing on the side, I don't know what to call that, uh, that gave me a little bit of problems to do, I sort of figured it out, it's still a little rough even now, I'm, I'm gonna clean it up later, but it looks okay to me. Uh, I tape up the nacelles because I don't want to sand them by accident or get putty on them by accident. Um, I noticed the same problem with diffusion for my uh, nacelle uh, for my Bassard collector, so I did the same technique with a little piece of paper. Worked out pretty well. Glued them in. Notice some mean gaps on there, the light leaking through. Uh, uh, ugly, right? So I put some putty around there to make a nice transition works out in the end even with all that masking tape the lights still shine through it so I can still test it looks great here you can see what I was talking about with uh, the, those like little grill things on the side not very pretty not yet but it will be anyway on to the secondary hull alright so first things first on the secondary hull was the uh, six pin connector even though I'm still using only three uh, I glued that in there with some CA glue and um, some accelerator to make sure it uh, glued well and fast. I used a lot of CA glue. It's a big block in there. It should hold. It hasn't broken on me yet. Anyway, here are all the lights I'm going to use. Uh, here I uh, wired up basically all the lights I'm going to use inside the uh, secondary hall. Oh, I'm moving pretty fast on this. Um, someone on one of the forums asked me, what am I going to do about the deflector dish? It's pretty close to all the windows. How am I going to make a light box? Well, I made a sort of little cone and I put a diffused uh, super blue, a super bright blue LED uh, and I added a bunch of resistors onto it to make sure it wasn't too bright and it ended up pretty cool. Uh, so this is my crude version of a light box. It's basically some styrene, uh, CA glued to the uh, part and I hot glued a blue LED in a little hole in the middle and it works out in the end. It, you know, even on camera, it doesn't seem too bright, right? Uh, so it's going to fit in like so. It's not going to block windows, right? It's not wide, it's narrow. So there will still be some gap for the light to shine through where the windows are. And uh, for added reflectivity and to make sure there's no light bleeding through, I added some uh, aluminum foil tape all along the um, styrene. And of course, on the joints, I put some of the black tulip to make sure there really isn't any light blocking. Uh, light leaking, sorry. Uh, here you can see uh, I was testing to see how the uh, nacelles would work on there. Uh, looks pretty cool to me. Everything was uh, soldered onto there and uh, now I'm ready to seal in that secondary hull. Moving right along, eh? So it's glued. Everything there is glued with uh, styrene glue this time. This time I used styrene glue. I didn't want to risk getting cracks like I did on the uh, pylon. So this time I used some testers glue in the tube. I usually use Tamiya glue in the bottle, the, the glass bottle, but it's too thin. It evaporates too quickly. This glue is thick. It dries a little long. It takes a little longer to dry, but it's worth it. It's thick. It holds. It really melts that plastic together. I've had no problems with it, and I've been handling this thing pretty roughly. So before I got to puttying this thing, I had to do a nice little light test, and uh, well, I was pretty excited. I got all the lights soldered in, right? Everything was ready to go, and I took a couple of shots here and there, left and right, some blurry, some not, and of course, I couldn't resist. I busted out the saucer I made, and I uh, attached it temporarily <laughs> with my hand holding the wires, and take a nice little picture, and... Yeah, this is going to look cool in the end. It really is with all the paint. I really hope so anyway. Time for putty. Ugh. Now this wouldn't be an AMT kit, or at least an AMT repop, if it didn't have gaps and injection point issues and bubbles and dents and dings and all this other fucking garbage you can think of. So much putty was used on the bottom of this 
secondary hall. Holy fuck. I couldn't believe it. Um, I must have spent a couple days sanding, uh, priming, sanding, priming, sanding, priming, putting more fucking putty over and over and over again. Ah, especially on the back spine. A lot of you might have heard some problems about the uh, the back spine of this uh, model. It's true to a certain degree. Um, I was I didn't have any clothespins big enough to go around the secondary hull, so I was holding this by hand, and I was sort of moving along the edge to make sure I got everything uh, uh, glued properly. I still ended up having a tiny, tiny gap. Uh, but I looked at the studio model, and on that spine, there shouldn't be a groove. It should actually just be um, filled. So that's what I did. I filled it with uh, with putty, sanded it nice and smooth, and it looks okay. You'll see some photos of it later. Now, one thing I've noticed that I'm not sure if other people have noticed or not is, uh, well, some more inaccuracies about this kit. First, there was that saucer rim, right, with uh, those bu those stupid fucking bumps. Next was the neck. Um, I don't know what it is with AMT, but they like bumps. They like putting bumps where there shouldn't be any. Uh, but I don't blame them, because on uh, the Yamaguchi, or the, uh, I guess, the modified Ambassador class, they did sort of put some bumps. Um, but here, look. The Enterprise C, flat along the neck. You see that? It's, it's flat. This is the studio model of it. It's pretty smooth, right? Look at the Yamaguchi. Bumps, but not in entirely like it, like they just added a small section of bumps on top of the flat surface uh, there's no torpedo launcher there at least on the Enterprise C maybe they added it later on but I don't see it there so um, yeah I was going to, I'm going to modify my kit to uh, match it a bit more uh, so first thing I did was I sanded the uh, the neck down right made it smooth cut out two little blocks of styrene glued them on filled it in with some putty Sand it smooth, prime, putty, sand, prime, putty, sand. You know, you know the drill, right? Uh, eventually, you know, blend it in and it looks nice. Um, I, I don't know if I might, like, scratch build a little torpedo launcher. Probably not. I'm too fucking lazy. Uh, it looks like it does on at least the studio model, so, uh, yeah, cool. So after all that putty and priming and sanding, just had a little bit left to do on the, the, the bottom part of the secondary hull. And, of course, there's the impulse engine, right? Here it's blue. Yes, mine's going to be blue. Here, look at this picture from the, the, the show. It's blue in the background. Yes, the Yamaguchi had red. The Enterprise C was blue, so it's going to be fucking blue. Ah! Anyway, here it is. Secondary hull with the nacelles, all ready for uh, some light sanding and some light blocking and to be primed. Uh, this is where I'm going to leave off on this build. Um, yeah couple things I don't like about AMT, they, it pisses me off, right? They get things wrong, or the, the kits don't fit well, you know, it's just crap. They should, well, they don't have the rights anymore, so round two should learn a thing or two from Bandai. They make pretty good kits. Anyway, I'm just ranting. I'm done. I'll see you guys next time. I'm not going to promise when I'm going to make another video, but, um... This next clip sort of reflects the sentiment most modelers have, at least Star Trek modelers have, of AMT repops. Uh, that's it for me. I'll see you next time. Watch me continue to turn this AMT pilot crap into the Enterprise C. Thanks for watching. Oh, yes! I hate this! It is revolting! More? Please.